So working on the last video made me remember just how much fun I have playing the Mortal Kombat franchise. Sure, I may not be a player anywhere close to pro contestant level, but with the 11th installment coming out at the end of April, I feel that we should hype it up with another review talking about Mortal Kombat X. I think you should pick a new topic to talk about based on something more your level like Math Blaster, but that might be a little too hard for you yet. Fool. 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 Greetings my fellow analytical androids and welcome to the Maroon Mercenaries review on Mortal Kombat X. I am your host, the Maroon Mercenary. Mortal Kombat X is still developed by NetherRealm Studios and published by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. Right off the bat, I like this game because it seems to be formulated better than the last installment of the franchise. The menu screens are more organized to take you to where you need to be more proficiently. It makes the flow of interaction a heck of a lot more convenient to maneuver around which means as the player Player, you get to play the game how you want to play quicker and smoothly. However, I should note that there are still complications to the process where you won't get access to a few things as efficiently as can be which I will mention later in the review. Straight after the press start prompt, the single player option is highlighted. In single player, you are led right away to story mode. I could approach the story mode in the normal way, but I feel that there is a better way to explain the story. Hello Maroon Mercenary, thank you for letting yourself come on to this show. I'm sure it's a real treat being here. Anyway, the main focus of the story takes place 20 years after the events of Mortal Kombat 9. Sure, I know it's just called Mortal Kombat, but that just muddles cataloging purposes with the original game. The story last left off the same way as most stories tend to leave off is that the antagonist Shao Kahn being defeated. I'd feel bad about any spoilers given, but the game does it for you in a previously on Mortal Kombat kind of prelude. This gives a different enemy to try to conquer Earthworm with a new evil army. I know that I make it sound pretty lame, but honestly it isn't too shabby because it adds a B story with conflict with Outworld having a civil war for who should claim Shao Kahn's throne. And how they tie it all in actually makes everything immersive. It gives more spice having multiple conflicts to be interested in all of the players you would play as. Speaking of which, this story comes as chapters again, starting with the lovable Hollywood blockhead Johnny Cage. To be honest, I never really liked Johnny during the entire franchise, but in this iteration, he does appear more likable and relatable compared to the pompous movie star cliche he normally is. During the 20 years later sections, we are introduced to new characters of the franchise. Some are not the best selection for fighting purposes for me, but they are still given decent personalities to give these new guys characters. Unfortunately, some of these characters are designed to wean away from our classics. To add salt to the wound, they are even known as family members to the older characters they are meant to replace. I mean, hey kids, do you like Sonya Blade, Kung Lao, and Jax Briggs? Well, too bad, it is out with the old and in with the new with Cassie Cage, Kung Jin, and Jackie Briggs. They are virtually the same characters in essence, but younger and flashier. Have fun! Oh well. As far as canon goes, Cassie Cage is proof that there is more than fighting going on in Mortal Kombat. Wow. <laughs> I guess with all that said, a flaw that I have seen is that they are trying to add new characters into the beginning trilogy story, especially between the first two tournaments. I'm looking at you, Devora. I will admit though that I like how they implemented the story into the fights, but they also have quick time events which didn't really do it for me. The events were too easy to bait and if chance if you did fail, there was nothing that changed that you could end up with the same results. This makes me think, why bother adding that and wasting our time with that? Well, I suppose I did my part. Time to underanalyze tablet games and add a snarky comments about it. You know, for next time, you should really explain the concept of being able to train your skills as a player for a genre with a feature called training mode. Bye! Thanks, Marusi. But that does give a good opportunity to explain that this game does have a training mode to be jack of all trades using the characters of the game or fine tune your skills playing as one. You can practice at your own pace at the difficulty you desire. Or like me, memorize the combo and special moves while your opponent just stands there and takes it. There is also a feature to practice fatality so you can plug them in quickly in the real battles before the timer runs out. You can practice with or without the timer. Following story mode would be the tower section. It is broken down in three categories. 
Traditional, Living, and Challenge. The traditional towers have a series of categories to climb. Classic Tower is a new name for the arcade tower. Pick a fighter, climb the tower, beat the boss, and get rewards for it. This is primarily a special ending for the combatant you play as. This isn't necessarily a canonical ending that you obtain, but it is still entertaining to see. Then you also can get the prize of an alternative costume for the fighter you play as. Next would be the Test Your Luck Tower. It is a series of Test Your Luck events with the first match having one modifier and ends the tower with seven modifiers. These matches can be very easy or very difficult depending on the modifiers given to the match. Then we have the Test Your Might Towers. I love this compared to the previous game because you don't need to unlock the next challenge from doing something else. It is the same concept of any other time. You punch in the buttons to gain strength and another button to activate the action. Each challenge is a pass-fail situation to advance in the towers. Finally, we have Endless and Survival Modes. They both do not have a final challenge at the end of the tower, but instead it is a stop until you lose play style. The difference between the two is that Survival starts with the health that you left the last match with, making the challenge, well, even more challenging. Living Towers are time-based towers set in hourly, daily, or weekly. These are special event towers to complete in the allowed time to play in with different modifiers per fights and themes to the gameplay. And challenge towers are randomly made towers that you complete then send invitations to your friends to challenge them to do a better job than you did. I love the towers because of the rewards you get from the materialistic like alternative costumes to the sense of achievement from finishing the towers. I mean, when I first played this version, I couldn't defeat the Test Your Might Tower. With a stroke of luck however, I managed to beat it while recording for this video and couldn't do it again. Finally, in single player mode, we have the single fights and test your luck. Single fights are pretty self-explanatory that you play individual matches against the computer. No towers to go through, just pick who you want to fight as, who you want to fight against, and where you want to do this. Test Your Luck is the same concept of the previous game, and yet different. The opponent and perks or disadvantages are randomly selected, but before then you can select how many randomized circumstances are used. Two player mode has one on one matches, test your luck, and a competitive test your might tower similar to what I mentioned before. But they also have custom combat. This is similar to test your luck, but instead of leaving the modifiers to chance, you can select the modifiers you want. Once again, online mode is available. I did manage to play it this time around when it first came out and touched up a little bit for this review. However, I still have limited experience from this. Online mode has options for you, but I usually play it on versus mode or king of the hill. Versus mode is simply a one-on-one -on -one battle that you can play online against another player. King of the Hill, on the other hand, is a rotation of challengers trying to defeat the winner of the previous match, and objectively, you want to keep the winning streak going for as long as you can. I suppose my biggest problem, even from day one, was to connect to the other players. It feels like it takes forever to log into a King of the Hill room or just to compete with another opponent. When I want to play a fighting game, I want to do it now. Another flaw that I've come across with that that sometimes my internet connection was ill-equipped for the gameplay making me play worse than I normally would, and there isn't much worse than I can be already. Uh, maybe it's time to move on to factions. Originally, when you start the game for the first time, you pick one of five factions from the list provided to you. You can work on daily challenges, faction towers to overall better your team, or to fight off an invasion. Check who is winning the faction wars, or even go against the faction boss. Think of the faction boss as another fighter, but given overpowered perks that you still need to achieve. So to my Brotherhood of Shadow members, I just want to say I'm sorry that I couldn't do my part there. The more you advance in your faction, the more perks you can get, including faction kills that are themed fatalities based on the group that you are with. I will say that you can change factions anytime you want, but that can cost you what you already have earned, so choose wisely before making that change. I find factions to be a nice touch. It gives a team spirit-like feel where not only are you the fan rooting for the team, but a more hands-on contributor as well. It gives daily motivation to play and extra practice to better your craft as a fighter. However, as a personal opinion, it really isn't my shtick being a part of a group pissing contest mostly because I never was too big on team spirit to begin with. Sure, I still play for the faction, but I really do it for more personal gain rather than the team and rooting for the group, especially when pride and bragging rights is the only thing on the line. 
Since I mentioned this on the last Mortal Kombat game, I will briefly mention the crypts they have once again. You travel through the crypts and purchase a mystery prize that is revealed after the purchase has been made via combat coins. I have failed to mention last time that there are jump scares around and about. This is because it is very rare to stumble across. This time though, it happens more often because it is programmed for the player to be at the wrong place at the worst time. Also, unlike last time, you get the option to defend yourself using a quick time like event style. You fail and the jump scare attacks you. I like this because you are more aware of the scenery as you traverse around instead of mindlessly collecting things. However, if you guys watched a particular Halloween video of mine, you know that I don't care for arachnids and oh my god there's an entire section dedicated to them. No! Sorry. Well, they dropped the more interactive necropolis theme gallery in place of a more traditional gallery. It's nice and it gets to the point, but it's really nothing worth digging any deeper other than finding that in the extra section. So moving on, once again, this game provides with downloadable content in the forms of new costumes and characters. They added different characters that once again didn't make the roster originally, but even more obscure than the last. For the most part. I feel that in the last game that Kenshi was relatively fresh enough, but this time they added Tremor. Tremor! I honestly didn't know who he was until I watched videos about the spin-off games that he was in. On the other side of the coin, they added film cameos from scary characters, although I don't necessarily consider Predator to be from any horror films. Honestly, I never bought any of the downloadable content for this game. It's because I'm cheap. However, it isn't a bad purchase if you are a fan of Alien, Predator, Jason, or Leatherface. Instead of praising the graphics and the audio, which believe me, there's plenty of praise to go around, I'd like to talk about other features this game has to offer. Before most matches, you are treated to introduction cutscenes that differ from previous titles of the game. They actually converse with each other. And I love this because it is more enjoyable than the one-line-fits-all statement and brings more feeling between the combatants before the fight starts. This in turn brings more immersion to the game in general. My favorite has got to be between Johnny Cage and Goro because it actually makes a reference to the first Mortal Kombat movie. Johnny Cage! Don't you owe me some sunglasses? Here is what you are owed! They come back with fatalities, which honestly would be pretty stupid if they didn't, especially since this is why they are even a franchise if you ask me. There are still some lame ones, but even the worst is like a B-minus fatality from the 2011 installment. This is mostly because they made the graphics much more realistic, and that means the gore is more and just better at being more... graphic. I won't apologize for that sad joke. However, you won't see babalities in this game, but instead brutalities are back. In the very original games, I never experienced completing a brutality so I don't know how it would differ, but in this game, it is a special move that is used as the last hit to make it seem more lethal than all the previous times before. However, to accomplish this you need to fulfill the requirements that are asked of it. It may simply be complete a set of button presses as the last hit or fill out more of a grocery list of tasks you need to do during the match. Either way, it is a nice new take of an ending of the match visually. One thing that really bothered me during my gameplay was that the game would briefly freeze up to process what is next to come. This could happen really for any reason during the match, but this goes especially when I was successfully activating the X-Ray move on my opponent. This would take me out of the game and enjoy it less, including removing the adrenaline I would get from the fight. If you can live with this, the quick freeze ups should not be a problem. My final thoughts about the game would be that Mortal Kombat X is the most superior game of the franchise to date in terms of organization, gore, and being playable. Sometimes things about this game are very excellent to experience like the intro dialogues and to be honest the fatalities while others I could do without like the quick time events and the spider caverns and the crypts. Ish. Even though Mortal Kombat 11 is coming very soon, I still think that MKX is still a very good purchase to acquire if you haven't yet. Bottom line, I definitely would recommend Mortal Kombat X. Hello, 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 and welcome to the outro, my analytical androids, and thank you for watching my review on Mortal Kombat X. 
If you like my video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I would love to be able to give a variety of content to you more often than once every two weeks, but I need your help. Spread the word about my videos and keep the subscriber base rising. But while we wait for the next video to arrive, leave a comment below about which pair is fun to play as a team. Because of earlier games, I think it would be fun to bring Noob Smoke as a true fighting team. However, some Fire and Ice from Scorpion and Sub-Zero sounds like fun. Tell me who is a good pair for you. I'm the Maroon Mercenary and I will see you next time.